In Colombia, the government of President Gustavo Petro has confiscated around 640 tons of narcotics this year. In South Korea, citizens protesters again ready out the water released into the ocean from Japan's Fukushima power plant. In Gabon, the general elections in which President Ali Bongo Odimba is running for a third term in office are proceeding normally. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Anne Rosabal from the Los Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Colombia, the government of President Gustavo Petro has confiscated around 640 tons of narcotics this year. According to the operational results provided by the defense authorities together with the military leadership in aspects such as drug seizures and illegal mining during the first eight months of 2023, the National Navy managed to seize 4% more than the tons of cocaine had regular rights seized in the same period in 2022. Concerning marijuana confiscations, authorities managed to complete 98% of the annual goal with an increase of 72% concerning the same period in 2022. In addition, the seizure of almost 19 tons of coca base stands out, that is, a 40% increase in seizures compared to the result for 2022. The controversy continues in Ecuador over the overseas online voting during the last elections held in the South American country. The National Electoral Board, CNN, has not yet made a decision regarding the report submitted by the Overseas Electoral Board that recommended the annulment of that voting. Marquito, a correspondent, Elena Rodriguez, with more details. The Overseas Special Board in charge of the scrutiny of the votes of Ecuadorians living abroad declared the annulment of the August 20th voting due to technical problems which prevented many migrants from exercising their right to vote. CNE advisor Elena Najera asked for the resignation of the officials responsible. I wake up with the news that the vote abroad has been declared null and void and that it's possible to go to vote again not an electronic one, but by paper ballot. And I do ask a modern president, as a serious issue, that we cannot continue having those people responsible handling any type of. The report recommends to repeat the voting in the constituencies of Europe, Asia, Oceania, Latin America, the Caribbean, Africa, Canada, and the United States. The election results could then be very different. For president and vice president, based on what I understand, it doesn't change much the results. It is the issue of the assembly members, because the migrants have the right to elect six assembly members as they representative here in the country. Political groups such as the Citizen Revolution consider that the irregularities detected in the system violated the rights of Ecuadorian living abroad to participate in elections. It was the claim of all Ecuadorians abroad who wanted to express their votes and whose rights were violated. That is why we asked to repeat voting abroad, and this time by an in-person voting. The Citizen Revolution Movement also filed a complaint with the Attorney General's Office for the alleged crimes of attempting against the safety of the computer systems and of obstructing the electoral process. The Supreme Court of Justice in El Salvador found former Minister of Security David Munguia guilty on charges of illicit enrichment. The former head official and his wife were sentenced to return more than $150,000 to the Salvadoran state after it was proven that the amount was earned by illicit means. The nation's attorney general said that 12 irregularities were found in the former minister and his wife's increased assets. The investigation revealed that Munguia's daughters were not linked to their parents' behavior. On Friday, a resident of Carrefour Faye in Haiti, capital Port-au-Prince, had to flee their homes to escape another bolt of gang violence. Earlier this month, the same neighborhood was attacked and hundreds of families were displaced. The Haiti National Police informed that it will secure the area, but it did not stop the gangs from continuing a violent takeover of jets and other part of the capital. Angered by the gang violence, residents and protesters from other areas blocked streets and burned tires and vehicles. 
Wearing face masks and carrying machetes, they gathered in front of the police station to demand their supports and resist in the gang. Since the assassination of President Hovind El Mois in 2021, gangs have seized control of up to 80% of Puerto Prince, killing, raping, and sowing terror in communities already suffering and damning poverty. Citizens in the United States called for a huge march to the Lincoln Memorial to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the historic rally in Washington, where civil rights leaders Martin Luther King gave his acclaimed I Have a Dream speech. The commemoration was organized by the Drum Major Institute, a group headed by the King family and the National Action Network. The parade will recall the March of August 28, 1963, for jobs and justice. The United States is going through a regressive process on voting rights, abortion, and social diversity communities, which means that many of the problems that led citizens to march still persist. In the face of this, the Institute of the Head of the National Action Network insists on the need to continue the struggles in this regard. Let's take a short break, but remember, you can join us on TikTok at Tell City English, where you find news in different formats, new dates, some more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. In South Korea, citizens protest as again radioactive water released into the oceans from Japan's Fukushima plant. Demonstrators gathered in the special city of Seoul, the country's capital, to express their rejection against the release of treated radioactive wastewater by Japan into the sea and criticized the South Korean government for supporting the release plan. Protesters urged the Japanese government to safely restore radioactive water in tanks after releasing it to the Pacific Ocean. During these demonstrators, over 10 people were arrested. Although the Japanese government and some scientists have insisted that these waters pose a risk to ecosystems, several neighbor countries have spurred their displeasure with the measure. Japan, once in the past, invaded the people and lands of the world, killing them with guns and knives for their own profit. Japan has started a Pacific war again by committing this environmental crime. If it is that safe, why won't Japan store it in their own land instead of releasing it into the world's well, the Pacific Ocean? and worrying everyone and harming their health. Diluting it would make it disappear. Japan is a war criminal that has committed crimes against the world's environment. Ban all Japanese imports so that we, South Koreans, can safely eat our own seafood. Green fire forests were still bubbling in the base in the country of North region on Friday in what is considered the largest fire of the European Union. The body of a man was recovered on Thursday in the Dadia Forest National Park near the Turkish border, bringing the death toll to 21. Authorities suspect that the bodies could correspond to migrants who recently crossed into the country from Turkey. The Green Disaster Region Identification Team has been activated to identify the remains and a whole land in English, Arabic, Pashto, Turkish and our Urdu has been set up for relative of possible victims. Hundreds of firefighters were making progress on Friday in the fight against multiple fires that have been active for days, including the one in Alexandropolis and another on the outskirts of the capital Athens. The International Soccer Association Federation, FIFA, announced the temporary suspension of Spanish Federation President Luis Rubiales. 
In the meantime, they have appointed Federal Russia as interim president while investigation is underway into Rubiales' behavior during the Women's for a Cup Australia New Zealand 2023 20, award ceremony, where Rubiales kissed gold medalist Jenny Hermoso without her consent. On Friday, Spanish police and customs announced the seizure of nearly 9.5 tons of cocaine from Ecuador in what they describe as the country's biggest ever haul of the drug. According to authorities, the seizure, which took place on Wednesday in the southern part of Algeciras, is the biggest concealed cargo of cocaine in Spain to date. The narcotic was stashed in banana crates inside a refrigerator container, they added. The logos of more than 30 European criminal groups who had been destined to take delivery of the cargo were found inside. Many of the packages were branded with Tawikas and a world hit led similar to a consignment of cocaine that was intercepted in Peru en route to Belgium in May this year. We are facing the largest seizure of cocaine in Spain. There are almost nine and a half tons, 9,436 kilos that have been seized, which have been intercepted in a refrigerated container from Ecuador. This container then, in the documentation that was presented before customs, based on the transport documents, it claimed to contain 1,080 boxes of bananas and that the narcotic substance was found later. It exceeds the 8,700 kilos that were also seized in Algeciras by the police in 2018 and would be the fourth or fifth largest drug seizure by police on record in Europe. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel and tell us the English, there you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, sub stories, special broadcastings and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to set up to date on the world's most recent events. Final job break, don't go away. Welcome back. In Gabon, the general elections in which President Ali Bongo Odimba is running for a third term in office are proceeding normally. More than 150,000 Gamonese have been called to the polls since early morning to cast their ballots. In this one round elections, the citizens will have to choose the next president of the nation, the member of the parliament, and the municipal authorities. Bongo and his main rival, Arbet Ondo Osa, are leading for the race for the presidency in this small state of just 2.3 million inhabitants. According to polls, it is a candidate for re election who is a favorite. Bongo aspires to continue in the footsteps of his father who governed the country for 41 years while the opposition denounces that the new voting system seeks to perpetuate Bongo. At least 13 people, including seven children, were killed on Friday in a stampede at the Bear Stadium in the Madagascar capital of Antanarivo. Red Cross reports indicate that at least 107 injured. The SMP occurred at the entrance to the Barrier Stadium where a crowd of around 50,000 spectators had arrived to attend the opening ceremony of the Indian Ocean Island Games. The cause of the tragedy was not immediately known, but the Red Cross said the toll could climb. Madagascar President Andri Rojelina, who was present at the opening ceremony, called for a minute silence. TV images broadcast matches of dazed and shocked people trying to locate their shoes pile among the objects lost in the daily crush. The Indian Ocean Island Games are a multidisciplinary competition being held in Madagascar until September 3. We have an 18-year-old child and we heard that there were 12 dead and over 80 injured. As we had no news of our child, we went to the morgue but they told us that no child that age had died. So we went to the emergency room to see if he was among the injured. We came to the hospital and found that my neighbor was dead. Now we are waiting for the papers so that the body can be taken out and we will bring it home. My nephew was injured, but he pulled through. 
On Friday, Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel held a closed-door meeting with his Mozambican counterpart, Philip Nyusi, as part of the war agenda in the African country. At a meeting, the representatives of both nations ratified the willingness to consolidate bilateral relations, as well as to expand and diversify comprehensive binational cooperation through the signing of agreements. After the meeting, the SNL thanked the government and the people of Mozambique for condemning the United States blockade against Cuba in different scenarios such as in the United Nations General Assembly and in the African Union. Angolan President Joao Lorenzo met on Friday at the local presidency headquarters with his Brazilian counterpart, Luis Ignacio Luda da Silva, who arrived on Thursday in Luanda, where he will make a three-day state visit to Angola. The two head of state went on to sign of strong agreements with emphasis on the defense sector, particularly Brazil's challenge for the protection of states in times of peace. Also, one of the issues to be addressed at the meeting, according to the Brazilian ambassador to Angola, Rafael Svidad, is Brazil's intention to train Angolan troops for the United Nations. In this sense, he added that his country is working on a cooperation that involves the training of troops from that African country in Brazil for the first rapid deployment forces in Angola at the service of the UN. Angola and Brazil temporarily hold the presidency of SAD. I think it would be very important to preparate a high-level meeting between the two regional blocs to harmonize strong economic cooperation within the framework of our development. Road rehabilitation and other extremely important projects have been paid for in full and on schedule. For his part, the Brazilian president spoke of some agreements reached and he held sector on the first work of African mission on the road to peace. In the health sector, we have addressed two important aspects. We have strengthened the prevention policy, which has given rise to the treatment logic we have now received, and the country's first drugs factory will be imported in a consortium of three Brazilian companies. The war in Ukraine at a time of food insecurity in Africa. The mission of African leaders to Russia and Ukraine was a positive step towards peace. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and many other stories on our website at elsurenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telesur English, Amanda Rosaval, thank you for watching.